Hello everyone. So welcome to this course that is Snowflake. Okay. So so Snowflake is a cloud data platform. Okay. To be more specific, uh, it's the first cloud uh, build data platform. So its architecture allows data specialists uh, to not only create the data warehouses but also a cloud data lake houses because it can manage both structured and unstructured data easily. So being that uh, Snowflake is, is based in the cloud, uh, this means that it, it allows developers to take uh, advantage of elasticity and scalability without worrying um, about things like uh, high upfront cost performance or complexity of managing the system. So, um, so why, uh, so why, why Snowflake? Okay, if if, uh, if you are getting into this course, okay, so there are a lot of options when it comes to the cloud data warehouses, and everyone has a specific use cases. So, however, uh, this when we talk about the uh, Snowflake, okay, it has many useful features, okay, which we are going to complete in this particular course. Okay, so in this, um, so basically, uh, the brief uh, overview of what we are going to complete in this. Okay, so we'll be starting with understanding what is cloud data warehouse. Okay, so then understand what is SaaS okay and uh, how snowflake different from the uh, big data as well like how is the uh, even like how the snowflake is different from the teradata and even we'll see the snowflake architecture okay so uh, and we'll study much more things okay so in this course so let's get started hello everyone okay so uh, first let's understand all the basics okay so first uh, let's understand what is data warehousing okay so a uh, data warehousing uh, basically is a process for collecting and managing the data from uh, various sources okay to provide meaningful business insights okay so you can see so here we uh, uh, there are so many data sources okay so where data sources are being collected okay so what is the purpose for be uh, collecting the data because we have to um, uh, see the insights okay so in the data right so basically we are uh, we are just finding the meaningful business insight from uh, the data which we are collecting. So a data warehouse uh, is typically used to collect and analyze the business data from heterogeneous sources. The data warehouse is the core of a BI system, okay, which is built for the data analysis and reporting. So uh, it is a blend of technologies and compounds, okay, which aids the strategic use of data. So uh, it is the electronic storage of large amount of information by a business which is designed for query and analysis instead of transaction processing. So it is a process of transforming the data into information and making it available to the user in timely manner to make a difference. Okay, so if I in, in short form, if I want to say uh, as a definition, okay, what is a data warehouse? So you can just um, uh, say like this okay so data warehouse is basically a type of data management system uh, that is designed to enable and support the business intelligence activities uh, especially uh, like especially analytics okay so data warehouse are solely intended to perform queries and analysis and often contain a large amount of historical data so data within a data warehouse is usually uh, derived from a wide range of sources such as application log files transaction applications okay so there are so many data sources okay so this is all about uh, a data warehouse hello everyone so welcome back uh, so in this video let's try to understand why snowflake okay so um we know like uh what is data warehouse now like why why we are studying okay so uh, uh, what is the uh, use of snow uh, opting the snowflake okay so there are uh, various reasons okay so first is uh, ease of use okay so snowflake is recognized for an interface okay that is simple to use and iterative okay so you can uh, get started with the service quickly okay and you can automatically um okay or uh, on a fly okay spin up and down the compute clusters of any size for any user uh, or workload without impacting the other jobs okay so with near infinite and instant elasticity and concurrency so snowflake promises to deliver the performance uh, your organization needs so next uh, the reason is it's fully automated okay and uh, and zero administration so uh, no need to worry about the configuration software updates failures uh, or scaling your infrastructure as your data sets and the number of users grow uh, snowflake uh, supports modern features like auto scaling uh, warehouse size auto suspense uh, big data workloads and the data sharing and the next uh, is about tools because of tools 
So querying data again, the large data sets is possible using a wide variety of BI tools like uh, Tableau, uh, Power BI, right? So uh, next is Snowflake Clost, okay, that is cost. So pricing is based on the amount of data you store and the compute hours for use, okay, so that, that you use. So uh, this cost optimized on-demand solution ensures data uh, is at the ready for analysis, okay, reporting uh, other business activity, okay, without inaccurate idle uh, system cost. So compute resources and prices are separate from the data store cost in the uh, Snowflake. So when we talk about the performance, uh, so you don't have to worry about the managing, scaling, uh, multi-cluster systems or tuning clusters to get the fast performance. Okay, so for example, the Snowflake includes the automatic query optimization. Okay, uh, they state that there are uh, no indices, no need to figure out the partitions and partition keys, no need to pre-shade any data for the distribution and no need to remember uh, to update the statistics. The Snowflake uh, company even makes sure that the query processing is on par with the competitive offerings. So next we talk about the flexibility. Uh, so Snowflake combined uh, uh, with the data lake offers the unparalleled flexibility and value. So you also get the flexibility to use the Snowflake while having the flexibility to leverage the uh, warehouse and query services. Okay, so on the same data lake. Uh, and when it comes to durability, uh, so Snowflake combined with the uh, data lake ensures your data is highly available and durable on uh, Amazon S3 like or Azure. So information is redundantly stored across the multiple facilities and multiple devices in each um, facility including the structured data lakes. So of course when it comes to encryption and security so you have a full control over uh, who have access to data stored uh, in the system. So they make it easy to maintain uh, strong security with access management controls plus data is encrypted at rest and in transit okay so uh, if we talk about overall okay so uh, why snowfield of course because of its performance speed on demand pricing okay zero administration cost uh, user friendly uh, ux okay so highly compatible and of course uh, easy data sharing okay so this is uh, why uh, snowflake uh, is demanding okay uh, welcome back okay so in this video let's understand what is snowflake now so Snowflake uh, is a cloud data warehouse offered as a software as a service on multiple cloud, okay, like Azure and AWS for the analytics workload. So this cloud uh, service, even it's similar to AWS Redshift, okay, so Google BigQuery, okay. So lately I have been hearing a lot of things about this and a lot of companies moving to this uh, cloud data warehouse. So now let's understand like what are the three major components uh, when we talk about the uh, Snowflake. Okay, so when it comes to cloud services, okay, so this component takes a care of variety of services like authentication, access control, metadata management, uh, infrastructure management, query parsing and optimization. So when we talk about the query processing, so Snowflake has a concept of virtual warehouse, which are like a separate MPP cluster, which can um, uh, in, in, uh, instantiate on demand, okay. So we can, which we can initiate on the demand, okay. So they come in uh, different uh, sizes like uh, uh, small and extra large, okay. Um, and Snowflake charges based on the size of the virtual uh, warehouse. So each virtual warehouse is an independent entity and does not share any uh, compute resources with other virtual warehouse. And the performance of uh, one virtual warehouse is not affected by the other uh, virtual warehouses. So when we talk about the uh, database storehouse, uh, database storage, so data stored in the Snowflake is automatically optimized, uh, compressed in proprietary uh, columnar format. And it, this is stored in the cloud storage like S3, Azure, Blob storage, okay. So Snowflake even manages how it's stored and uh, where it is stored and it's only accessible by the SQL queries run using the, which we run using the Snowflake, okay. So uh, the main three points you can just, uh, some of the points you can just uh, remember, okay, when we talk about Snowflake, okay, so no hardware, okay, and virtually no so no software and uh, in, uh, next is internal hand, uh, handling of management, maintenance, upgrades and tuning and it runs completely on the cloud infrastructure and it uses the virtual compute instances for the compute needs and, and of course will not require any package software. Okay, so these are some of uh, the um, components you need to remember okay, when we are uh, talking about the Snowflake. Hello everyone, so welcome back. So in this video, let's try to understand the key concepts and, uh, and its architecture, okay? So with help of the documentation, which is provided by the Snowflake. Uh, you can see, so Snowflake uh, Data Cloud is powered by advanced 
data platform provided as a software as a service Snow snowflake enables data storage processing and analytics solution okay so remember the three things okay it enables the uh, data storage processing and the analytics solution that are faster easier to use and far more flexible than the traditional offerings so the snowflake data platform is not built on any existing database technology or big data software platforms such as hadoop instead snowflake combines completely a new sql query engine with an innovative architecture natively designed for the cloud so basically snowflake is built upon the uh, other uh, cloud services like aws or azure okay so uh, uh, to the user so snowflake provides all of the functionalities of enterprise analytic database along with the uh, uh, additional special features and unique capabilities so uh, so this is what the architecture of uh, snowflake okay so you can see like we have a three major components here so we have a data storage we have a query uh, processing and we have a cloud services so under the query processing we have a virtual warehouse okay we have uh, it's all the virtual warehouse and under the cloud services we have the different components like security metadata manager optimizer infrastructure manager and authentication access control so you can see so uh, um, so snowflake architecture is a hybrid of traditional shade disk uh, 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 shade disk and uh, shade nothing uh, database architecture okay so there are different architectures right so it's based on the uh, shade disk and shade nothing uh, uh, database architecture uh, similar to the shade disk uh, architecture snowflake uses a central data of repository for uh, persisted data that is accessible for all the compute nodes in the platform okay so here you can see so these are the main three components uh, data storage uh, query processing and uh, cloud services so when you talk about data storage so when the data is loaded in the snowflake okay so uh, as the first step okay so snowflake recognizes the data in its internal optimized compressed and columnar format so snowflake stores this optimized data in a storage cloud storage okay this is what the first step when we are loading the data into the snowflake then the snowflake manages all the aspects of the uh, how this data is stored it organizes uh, file size it maintain all uh, like uh, file size structure compression metadata statistics and other aspects of data are handled by the snowflake the data objects stored by the snowflake are not directly visible nor accessible by the consumers okay so they are only accessible through the sql queries operations run using the snowflake okay remember so uh, so it's not directly accessible you have to write the queries to access those uh, data okay so next uh, we have a query processing okay so which is a virtual uh, warehouse so query processing is performed in the processing layer okay so where the snowflake process queries using the virtual warehouse and each virtual warehouse is the mpp compute cluster composed of multiple compute nodes allocated by the snowflake from the cloud provider so each virtual warehouse is independent so as we even the features we have discussed right it's it will uh, so it will not uh, impact the other uh, virtual warehouses okay so each virtual warehouse is an independent compute cluster that does not share compute resources with the other virtual warehouse so as a result so each virtual warehouse has no impact on the performance of the other virtual warehouses okay so finally we have a cloud services so cloud services would be authentication infrastructure management metadata management query passing optimization and access control so this is what the uh, data warehouse solution uh, by the snowflake okay so uh, so this is uh, what the basic uh, uh, architecture okay so you can see you can it's very simple okay so uh, the three layers database storage uh, query processing and the cloud services they provide and how it's internally it's going to work and uh, and about um, more importantly you should remember the virtual warehouses okay so when we get into the platform so we'll uh, we'll understand much in detail so this is what the basic architecture of the uh, snowflake Hello everyone. So welcome back. So in this video, let's see how we can just uh, sign up for the uh, 30 days free trail. Okay. So just search for uh, Snowflake. Okay. So if you go to the www.snowflake.com. Okay. So here you can just click here, start for free. Okay. So if you uh, click here, okay. So start for free, you will get uh, a sign up page. Okay. So where you need to enter the first name, last name, email company okay name and the uh, and even like once you have entered the details okay so you need to um, select either you are gonna um, configure with uh, aws uh, azure okay so or gcp okay so i think uh, only aws and azure will get an option uh, okay so here yeah so once you have signed up okay this is what the page will land in okay so you now you are signed up and uh, the mail will be sent to your uh, and an activation uh, uh, mail will be sent to your gmail address okay so you need to go and just first confirm that uh, uh, click on to this uh, 
uh, go to the mail and click on this activate okay so once you have just added in okay so this is uh, what once you have activated into your snowflake account okay so this is what the page will land in okay so uh, so this is about the sign up okay so let's understand uh, about this okay so uh, about the about this dashboards and other uh, walkthrough in the next video hello everyone so in this video let's understand about the key concepts and the architecture from the documentation itself okay so uh, <clears throat> so here you can see so snowflake's uh, data cloud uh, is uh, powered by advanced data platform provided as a software as a service so basically it is a software as a service so when we uh, discuss the uh, different uh, um, uh, uh platforms right so we have a software as a service we have a platform as a service we have infrastructure as a service but snowflake is considered as a software as a service so whenever uh, the user is opting for the snowflake so everything is managed by the snowflake itself right so uh, here just user uh, just just has to log in and utilize uh, all the resources from the snowflake right so it is considered as a software as a service so snowflake enables data storage okay these are some of the options okay so what it provides it enables the data storage uh, processing and the analytics solution that are faster uh, easier to use and far more flexible than the traditional offerings okay uh, the snowflake data platform is not built on any existing database technology very important okay so our uh, big data software platforms such as hadoop instead Snowflake combines a completely new uh, new SQL query engine with an innovative architecture. Okay, so which is designed for the uh, uh, cloud. Uh, to the user, Snowflake provides all the functionality of enterprise analytic database, along with many additional special features and the unique capabilities. Okay, this is some of the key concepts of Snowflake. Okay, so now um, so as I told you, so uh, it is a platform as a service, right? So uh, they have mentioned. Uh, why it is a platform as a service so you can see so snowflake is a true so, uh, SaaS offerings why because there's a no hard way to select install or configure so as i told you so when uh, whenever we have a software as a service offering so uh, another example you can compare with the gmail right so whenever we are opting we are using the gmail application of course we are not uh, worried about uh, uh, anything to install configure or manage right so similarly so in the snowflake it's also considered a software as a service where we are not worried about any uh, virtual or physical uh, hardware right so uh, whether to, uh, if it is to update install and into configure right and there is no virtual software to install right so of course we uh, when we compare with the gmail of course we are not installing any software right so similarly so even the snowflake is not uh, a software right so we uh, we'll, uh, basically will not install it right so there is no virtual software to install configure or manage and ongoing maintenance management upgrades and tuning are completely handled by the snowflake so of course this is a true a software as a service offering okay by the snowflake so snowflake runs completely on the cloud infrastructure so uh, all the components of uh, snowflake service okay so other than uh, optional command line clients drivers connectors which are running the public cloud infrastructures so even the snowflake uses this virtual compute instances for its compute need and storage for the persistent storage of the data and snowflake cannot be run on the private cloud infrastructure that is on on premises or hosted because it's completely on cloud and uh, um, all the components on the Snowflake run on the public cloud infrastructure. Some of the, like, these are some of the optional, like command line interface, drivers, and the connectors. And even the Snowflake is not a package software offering, okay, that can be installed by the user. So they have already told you it's not a uh, software. And Snowflake manages all the aspects of software installation and updates, okay. So this is, of course, the true uh, SaaS offerings, okay, by the uh, Snowflake. So this is what the architecture is, okay. So you can see, like, uh, it's wrapped under the virtual private cloud. Uh, okay, so under the VPC. So here, uh, so this is the architecture. Okay, so um, so Snowflake architecture is a hybrid of traditional shared disk and shared nothing database architecture. Okay, so here like no need to uh, remember or anything as such. Just if you know the, the concept, okay, how the architecture looks in the uh, uh, Snowflake. Uh, so here you can see like we have a three different layers okay starting with three k layers one is we have a storage okay so we have a database storage okay so then we have a query processing okay so where we have a virtual warehouses and finally we have a cloud services okay so like it includes these different components like uh, security metadata manager optimizer infrastructure manager then authentication access controls all these components comes under the cloud services okay so next uh so when we talk about individually okay when we talk about uh, database storage 
So when the data is loaded into Snowflake, of course, it is a warehouse, right? So it's a warehouse solution. So whenever we load the data into the Snowflake, Snowflake reorganizes the data in an internal optimized, compressed and columnar format. Okay. And Snowflake stores this optimized data in the cloud storage. Okay. So this is what, this is what it does. Okay. This is what the complete architecture they were just explained. So and Snowflake manages all the aspects of how this data is stored, um, the organization, file size, structure, compression, metadata, statistics and other aspects of data store are handled completely by Snowflake. And the data objects stored by Snowflake are not directly visible nor accessible by the customers. Okay, so they are only accessible through SQL queries operation run through the Snowflake. Very important. Okay, so where, uh, if the users are customers, if they want to access the data from the uh, Snowflake, they can't do it. Okay, so we don't have any specific UI for that. Okay, they can uh, get the data by uh, giving the SQL queries. Okay, running the SQL queries on the uh, Snowflake. Okay, so next we have a query processing. Okay, so uh, where we have a virtual warehouses. So query uh, processing uh, is performed in the processing layer, okay? And Snowflake process queries using the virtual warehouses, okay? So at each virtual warehouse is MPP, that is parallel processing, okay? Compute cluster composed of multiple compute nodes allocated by the Snowflake, uh, which for, uh, that is from a cloud provider. And uh, whatever the virtual house you're seeing, it's independent of each other, okay? So that's what they have written. So each virtual warehouse is an independent uh, compute cluster okay that does not share the compute resources with other virtual warehouses so as a result so each virtual house has no impact on performance of other virtual warehouses so finally we have a date next layer that is a cloud services so uh, the cloud services okay the cloud services layer is a connection of a services that coordinate activities across the snowflake and these services tie together of all the different components of Snowflake in order to process the user request from login to query. So when it comes to the cloud services, it includes all the different components, okay, where we can interact with the uh, Snowflake, okay. And, uh, and, and you can see uh, the cloud service layers are also run on the compute instances provisioned by the Snowflake from the cloud provider. These are some of the uh, services which is managed by the cloud, so like in authentication, infrastructure management, metadata management, query passing and optimization is a complete overall top layer, right? So uh, very, very can access other uh, components of the warehouse. Um, uh, so finally, so how to connect to the Snowflake? Okay, so uh, there are multiple ways how we can just connect to the Snowflake. Okay, first we have a, a web uh, based UI uh, interface. Okay, so we'll be discussing in upcoming videos, right? Uh, a web based uh, user interface uh, from which all the aspects of managing and the using Snowflake can be accessed. Uh, then a command line uh, clients, okay, so which can also access all the aspects of managing and using software, uh, Snowflake, uh, ODBC, JBC drivers can be used by other applications to connect to the Snowflake, okay. So these are some of the third parties, other applications like Tableau and the native connectors like Pi, Spa, Pi and Spark that can use to develop application for, for connecting with Snowflake. And V1, we have third party connectors that can be used to connect applications as ETL, uh, and BI tools. Okay, here mainly we'll see the web uh, user interface, how to connect to the Snowflake and other things. Okay, so I hope you understood. So some of the key components of the uh, Snowflake. Okay, so in this video, let's understand some of these uh, uh, supported cloud platforms okay, so by the Snowflake. Okay, so as we understood in the previous video, the software as service offering, right? Uh, so uh, which completely runs on the cloud infrastructure. So uh, the means like we have seen the three uh, layers that is storage, computer and cloud services. Uh, when we deployed, uh, so basically they are deployed and managed entirely on the selected cloud platform. So, so which are the three uh, cloud platforms? Okay, so uh, you can see Snowflake account can be hosted on any of the following uh, uh, cloud platforms. That is on the uh, AWS. Okay, so Amazon Web Services. Okay, so this is what the Amazon Web Services. You can um, uh, then GCP. That is uh, Google uh, Cloud Platform. Okay. And finally, we have uh, Azure, Microsoft Azure, okay? So these are the three uh, uh, cloud platforms, okay? So where you can uh, host the uh, Snowflake. So on each platform, the Snowflake provides one or more regions, okay? So where the account is provisioned, okay? It's very important. So, uh, so you need to even check the regions, okay? So uh, we'll see the regions in the next video, okay? And um, yeah, so pricing. So uh, so pri it differs in the unit for the credits and the data storage are calculated by the region on each of the cloud platforms. So of course, like uh, so, whatever the uh, operations we perform, so based on that, uh, the charge uh, it will be charged. Okay. So just remember. So when we are talking about the Snowflake and uh, 
uh, and what are the different cloud platforms it is hosted on just remember it's aws gcp and uh, azure okay so these are some of the supported cloud regions okay so um, here you can see so region let your organization choose where your data is geographically stored across your regional national and international operations okay and regions also determine uh, where your compute resources are provisioned so selecting regions is very much important okay so uh, so, um, uh, so that is a, this is our main criteria is okay. Whenever you are designing or whenever you are opting for the warehouse solutions, okay. So even uh, regions plays very important role okay when it comes to the latency and all those things, right? And Snowflake supports uh, region across all the Snowflake supported cloud platforms. Okay, grouped into three global geographic segments. So we have a North America, okay. So uh, we have Europe and Asia specific. Okay, so you can see this is the AWS. Okay, so uh, these are some of the regions. Okay, so you can see, and this is the uh, Google Cloud platform. Okay, so we have only one region in the North America and Azure. Uh, we have almost five, and majority we have AWS in the Europe. Okay, uh, and uh, we have the uh, different. So they are clustered in this place, right? In this region and the Asia specific also, okay, you can see like uh, we have AWS when it comes to India specifically, okay? So, so this is the uh, regions, okay? Uh, <clears throat> okay, so they have given in the, for example, when we talk about the individual like North America, okay, you can see here. So when we have worked with the um, uh, AWS, right? So we have the, uh, us east west uh, two us east two all right uh, us east one and ca central asia this is the regions okay and uh, you can see all the basic details in the documentation itself okay so in which region you want to host uh, the uh, snowflake okay and of course the pricing is also very much important okay so um, so you can see so differences in the unit cost for credits and data storage are calculated by region okay so even this is important so by region they have the different charges like based on like if you have worked with aws azure even the charge based on the regions also right uh, so here we have a pricing page um, Okay, so uh, in the documentation, you can just, uh, yeah, so this is what the pricing you can see. So we have a different uh, options available here, standard enterprise, okay. Uh, we have a business critical and the snowflake. Okay, so here you can just select the platform. Okay, so in which region, okay, for example, US East uh, and uh, in Europe or USD. Okay, so you can just calculate what is the, uh, cost per credit okay so all the information you can just access from the pricing uh, page hello everyone so welcome back so in this video let's exp uh, explore the web ui this is a classic web ui okay. so once you log into your uh, snowflake okay so this is the uh, page where you land in okay so uh, we have a different um, buttons here okay so you can see like we have a database shares data market warehouse we have worksheets uh, history account then we have something called partner connect then we have help section notification uh, we have a new section called snow site okay so this is a newly added interface okay and again here we have uh, data uh, to find the uh, database objects okay and here we have account uh, details so let's explore all this one by one okay so first let's explore the account okay so if i just click on to the account okay so whatever the account you have been created so here we have a different options okay so we can change the password okay so if i click so you can just uh, uh, enter the current password and you can just change the password here okay so next uh, is very important that is switching the role okay so in an organization if you're working uh, okay so of course you'll have a certain role okay and certain privileges to work with the snowflake right so here like um, uh, we have a different roles here like by default is account admin okay so these are the different roles uh, we have a public okay system admin user admin okay so there are the uh, so you can just create a different roles here okay so that you can just access so for example if i just go to the system admin okay so you can see so right now i'm in account uh, admin okay you can see here right 
and uh, even you can uh, see in the worksheet also just remember so in the role you can see the account admin fine for example, I'll just switch the role to the user admin. As soon as I switch to the user admin, you can see like I had here uh, one uh, uh, ta uh, uh, one button called account, right? So uh, so I don't have that particular option here, right? So when I'm just switching to the user account, okay? So user admin, right? And uh, so I will just switch back to my role that is account admin, okay? So as, when I switch back, you can see like I can see the uh, option in account, right? So based on the uh, uh, whatever the role you are choosing, you'll have a certain privileges. That's what I said, right? So you can just select all the roles from this from your account uh, tab. So next is uh, preferences, okay? If I click on to the preferences, okay, uh, you have a two options. One is general and notification. Under the general, you have all the user information like first name, last name, uh, login name or the password and email address okay and even uh, if you want to uh, um, uh, enroll into this MFA that is multi-factor authentication okay you can just click on to the end rule okay in the MFA okay so just remember so you can just enroll you have MFA option even in the snowflake okay so you can just uh, enroll from your uh, account tab so under the notification okay so if you want uh, um, notification to turn on right so you can see choose what you want to be notified about how you want to receive okay so you can see like whether it's web uh, email all or none okay so right now it's none okay if you were this uh, email so if any uh, notification if you want to send it you will receive an email okay whatever the email you have just registered here right so right now i'll just keep it none okay so you can just change the preferences from here okay so this is what the preference and finally log out right so if you want to log out to your uh, uh, snowflake account you can just click on his logout here so here we'll have a id and there's the organization okay next uh, what the edition you are using and as i told you so we have a, uh, three different regions right so where we can just uh, uh, make use of our snowflake right so so one is aws azure and gcp so right now i'm using uh, aws and the region is asia pacific that is mumbai right so when we saw when we saw the regions okay so there was one region in india right so that is Asia Pacific, that is what the Mumbai region. So you can just access all the basic configuration and details from here, even from your account. So uh, next, uh, you have a help section. Okay, as soon as I click on the help section, so again, uh, you can view the uh, documentation here. Okay, so you can just move the documentation and A to Z. Okay, so all the information are available over here with respect to the documentation, with respect to all the Snowflake configurations about the warehouses, worksheets and all those things. Okay, uh, so uh, this is uh, the community. If you want to visit to the community uh, forum, okay, you can just click on this community. Then we have a download. Okay, if I click on download, it will redirect to the uh, download tab. Okay, so where you can just download all uh, the drivers like uh, uh, JDBC driver or um, ODBC Python components. Okay, so you can see like this are some of the Python components. If you want to install, like pip install Snowflake. Okay, uh, then Node.js driver, then Spark connector. Okay, so Go Snowflake driver and Snow CD. Okay, these are some of the downloads option. Okay, you can just access from the help section. Uh, so next we have a show uh, help panel. Okay, so if I just open this, so it will. Uh, 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 so I'll be uh, getting started, right? So of course, I'll be getting started with, so I'll get a help, okay? So what are the different tabs we are available uh, in this, okay? So, so this is what the help section is, okay? So this is notifications, as I told you. So uh, I have currently turned off, right? So you can just turn on by clicking onto this or else you can just go back and change the uh, preferences, right? So under the notification, you can just change it, okay? So uh, this is all about... Um, uh, notification and finally next we have something called partner connect okay so uh, if you want to connect uh, with the other third party uh, uh, sources like uh, we'll have a small demo on the fire train okay so uh, we'll have a uh, separate section okay how we can just connect with this fire train okay so these are so you can see like we have a dbt fire train okay uh, so these are some of the connectors okay so uh, where you can just load and analyze the data okay so from this connectors okay so this is all about this sections okay so now let's uh, move on to uh, first uh, databases okay so i hope you understood about this preferences and all those things fine so let's explore uh, snowflake in the next video okay so next is databases okay if i click on this databases okay so uh, here 
uh, you have all the databases with respect to this account okay so if i just change this okay so if i just uh, change the role okay with respect to this role the admin role okay if i just click on the user admin role okay so you can see the uh, different databases i have only one databases with respect to the user admin okay so if i just switch back role to the account admin okay so here you can see uh, the databases with respect to the account admin so whenever you are working with snowflake always you need to keep eye on here okay you need to like uh, check okay so in which role right now i am in right so this is account admin so here you have all the databases right so which already created so you can see the database name okay so about the origin the creation time and who is the owner of it okay so and uh, this is some of the comments you can just provide it while creating it so for example for the databases section again we have a three options like i can create I can clone the existing database okay i can drop and even i can just transfer for example i'm just selecting this test as soon as i click onto this test okay so i um uh, so i can clone this right so i can just clone this existing database i can uh, drop this database so i can even transfer the ownership okay so here if i just click on transfer ownership okay so to which a role i want to transfer this particular database so i can just give all this option here okay so uh so for example if i click on to this making this public okay so you can see this uh, sql or uh, um, query also okay how does it look basically okay and um so here okay so even i can just grant privileges to this particular database whatever i've just selected uh see so another option okay so what is the privileges okay so whether i want to create the schema from this or modify the database or monitor the database or reference usage okay so and to whom i want to grant these privileges okay so i can just select for example i want to modify i want to give the uh, privilege modify so to which role okay so i can just uh, select the role okay so and grant the permissions okay i can grant privileges on the databases on the test or database okay so these are some of the options uh, available right and uh, so you can even check the last refreshed okay so uh, all the uh, details and uh, um, so next is if i'm just clicking oh yeah so creating database right so we have seen the clone and drop is very simple if i click on drop okay if i want to drop this database i can just directly click on the s and it will be dropped okay so for every action you can see this no uh, show sql right so you can see this is what i can uh, see here right okay so next is clone okay so if i want to clone this what is the name i want to give and what is the source and i can add the comments right so this is what i can do it so next is create so if i want to create a, a demo uh, one two three and uh, a new uh, database added okay so you can see the uh, query here okay and uh, finish okay so as soon as i click you can see like uh, demo one two three has been added so if i click on to this demo uh, uh, to the database for example i am right now in the databases if i click on to the any of the databases for example if i click on to the demo 123 you can see like i'll be redirected to the another section okay so where i have the uh, options to create the tables okay so you can see i can create the table again we have a different tabs like we have a views okay we have a schemas okay then we have a stage stages file format uh, sequence and the pipes okay so these are the different options available under this okay so if i just get back to databases if i just go to do something called fire database they have already existing table you can see so if i click on this avengers table okay you can see the uh, table details like what are the columns we have and what is the ordinal what is the type of that particular column okay it is nullable okay so can we enter the null uh, values inside it right so next we have a default and the comments right so you can um, see all the details here right uh, so this is uh, the schema stages okay so all the details you can just access okay uh, so you can uh, yeah okay so let's get into this demo one two three okay so if i get in demo one two three so if i click on this uh, create table so i can give the table name that is a uh, new table okay so the schema i'll give uh same is public okay so come and i can just add it so i can add the columns okay so uh as uh okay so c1 okay let's keep it default okay then c2 and c3 okay so even i can just change whether it's uh first is integer okay so next i can make this as uh um uh, integer okay so even this is integer okay so i can just add it and click on to this finish okay so you can see the new table has been added 
okay this is how we create it okay so uh, for example inside this new table i can just get in you can see all the details here and if i want to load the table okay i can just directly click it here or else if we even we have an option here i'm just selecting this new table even have this load date option so from where i want to load it okay so with um, so which uh, warehouse okay so we need to select that okay so next is uh, if i'm just selecting assume like uh, i'll just get back to uh, something called demo csv i'll just load it okay so next okay the file format okay uh staging okay okay as you can see so on copy okay there's some errors here okay fine so this way you can just load the data okay so just select the table uh load data so here you need to select the warehouse sources file format and load the option okay so even if you're go to getting into this table again we have a different option like here uh, to load the data okay so these are the two uh, ways you can just load the data okay so next this is about the creating next create like okay so if you want to create a table that has the same metadata as existing table you can just uh, click on this option so again like the clone okay so if you want to clone it or if you want to drop the table or same thing if you want to transfer the ownership okay so under the table section itself okay here we have views uh we have schemas you can see these are the two schemas we have uh this is stages uh whatever the file formats you are just added you can see all the file formats here okay so sequences pipes and all the details you can just access fine so uh, this is all about the uh, table section okay uh, I think I have covered all the uh, parts here, right? Yeah, okay. See, knowing the interface is very, uh, very much important, right? So when you are working, uh, so you should know like uh, where I can access the databases, where I can access the tables and how I can just transfer the ownership and if I want to clone it and develop it, uh, sorry, drop it and how I can just do it, right? I hope you understood all about the databases section, right? Uh, so now let's get back. Uh, yeah, fine. So next, let's go to the shares. Okay, so what is shares here? Okay, so uh, here in the documentation, you can see so uh, secure data sharing enables sharing a selected objects in the database in your account with other Snowflake accounts. Okay, so very much important. So if you want to uh, uh, share the uh, with the other Snowflake accounts, okay, you can just make use of this uh, secure data sharing. Okay, so the following data, uh, the Snowflake database objects can be shared that is tables external table secure views okay secure uh, materialized views and secure udfs okay so so this is how basically the uh, how it does work you can just access from the documentation itself okay so this is what the share is okay uh, so you can just uh, see so when i'm just selecting the different uh, for example switching role to the user admin okay so here you can see uh, 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 this is the uh, uh, we don't have any shares here right so if i'm just getting back to this account admin so this is what the shares we have right so this is again so we have inbound uh, outbound shares we can create it okay so all these details you can just uh, see here okay so this is all about the shares so next uh, we have a, a data market okay so uh, so in the data market so if i just try to click on to this okay so this is what the data market is okay so where you can just uh, uh, get the all the datas okay so um, it could be any form of data okay so whether it's a uh, weather okay so uh, whether like if you want to have some of the uh, risk analysis okay so all the details all the datas okay so which you can just access from the data market that's what you can see so drive business insights instantly with the data from the world's best data and the software providers okay so all this uh, data uh, which is uh, made available to you for the analysis uh, and this office okay so you can just access all those data in this office from something called snowflake data market okay you can just access from here okay so this is what the data market is so next we have a warehouses this is very much important right so this is uh, again with respect to the role you can just switch it and check what are the different warehouses we have so again uh, so you can see the status of the warehouse okay so we have a two warehouse here okay one is fire train and when we have something called compute hedge and size okay so when we talk about the size okay you can see like uh, we have uh, 
So what is warehouse? We have seen, we know, right? So warehouse are basically are required for the query as well as GML operation, right? So including the loading data into the tables, right? So you can see like we have different options based on our requirements. So we have um, like extra small, then we have small, medium, large, uh, extra large, okay, 2x large, okay, and the credits and the uh, um, and the billing also, okay, based on the credits, okay, how you are uh, utilizing this warehouse, right? So you can see all the information here, like uh, what is the cluster, okay? So there is a size. Um, for example, if I get into this Fiatrain warehouse, okay, so you can view all the uh, details here, right? So that is loaded time, okay? So all the uh, uh, basic details, okay? When when it was loaded and all the things you can just uh, view from here, okay? If I just get back, let's see the compute. Okay, so we have same thing, fine, okay. Okay, so again, so if I'm just selecting certain warehouse, so again, I can just uh, uh, configure the existing or suspend the warehouse or drop it or transfer the ownership. Uh, so even I can just create a new warehouse. So I can just give uh, like a demo one, two, three as a warehouse. And what is the size I want to select, whether it's 4x and what is the number of clusters I need, minimum number of clusters, okay. Then scale, uh, then scaling policies, then auto suspend, okay. So whenever you're not active, okay, so... Uh, so it will automatically suspend so you can just set those particular time okay so and you can just finish and you can just create within a few uh, minutes right so this is uh, where you can just create a warehouse okay so this is all the different options again same thing okay so if you want to drop it or resume it okay i'm just selecting if you want to resume this right now it's suspended if you want to resume it you can just uh, resume this this is already running so if you want to suspend you can just click on this okay so this is what the warehouse uh, page okay where you can just access all the uh, 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 details regarding the warehouses so next is worksheets okay so uh, before that before getting into the worksheets let's explore this uh, find data objects okay so here also you can just explore all the data okay so for example i'll just get into this snowflake sample data okay so are the simple uh, sample data which is available okay so inside this we have a tables okay so we have a customer okay so for example if you want to preview the data you can just preview the data here okay so all the data you can just access okay uh, and uh, details of this data okay and uh, for example uh, let's uh, Okay, if I just run some query. So this is how we add new worksheets. Okay, one thing I just want to show you. For example, uh, uh, select. So if I'm just executing some query here. So you can see like, we are getting some uh, option here, right? So if you want to execute this, I'll click on run. So, so here that option can be handled from here. Okay, so here you can see like I can just load the script. Okay and uh, so one main thing is whenever i'm just loading the script okay whatever the script we, right now we have okay it will be erased okay so it will be basically uh it will it will update the script whatever you are adding okay so you should be very careful when you are loading the script okay so uh, so existing uh, queries will be uh, uh, removed okay and next is turn on the code highlight okay so if you want to turn on you can see like it will uh, turn on the uh, uh, 
uh, the code okay where where we are working with and next is hide uh, this is what the hide run conf uh, confirmation so you can see like right now if i just run this i'm just getting a confirmation here right so uh, you, you saw the confirmation so if you want to uh, remove that you can just click on to this hide run confirmation and similarly if you want to delete it you can just click on to this delete and delete the worksheet okay this is all about the worksheets okay so you can just type on multiple add the worksheets so right now you can see like i have just run one query so in the one in the query you can see um we have a results tab and the data preview tab okay under the results tab okay so you can see the query id i can click on this query id and and can see the details information about that what is the uh, query whether the query was successful or not okay who is the user and where what is the warehouse and what was the start time end time duration okay then query id session okay what was the text okay so all the details you can just access from here right so okay this is what the query id is okay so here also so you can view in short okay so what was the completion uh, time execution time then compiling uh, SQL, all the details okay so here uh, so when i'm just showing this so when we went to this snowflake okay so let's go to some sample data okay so let's call center data so let's preview the preview data okay uh, yeah so here uh, so when we see the details okay you can just access the details from here data okay so all the details you can just uh, so if you want to clo uh, close the worksheet so one main thing you can see the drawback here so whatever the worksheet i'm just adding you can see like uh, all the default name is new worksheet so it makes confusion okay so this can be avoided when we go with the snow set okay so we'll explore that fine so uh, so let's delete this worksheet so so from here also you can just open the new worksheets that is you can just add the plus icon or if you want to open tutorials or load script okay so this is what you can just do it and if you want to move to different worksheets again you have different options here right so you can see like i can can't find okay which worksheet i'm just referring to right so we can just careful with that okay so this is all about uh, uh the uh, query okay when you run the query okay you can see the for example i'm just working with some database i can see the data preview here okay so all the data preview and the details of the data and whatever the columns you have even you can just search it okay so if i'm just searching for a medium uh, okay so you can just see all the mediums here okay so you can just search that and even like you can just download this okay so whatever the uh, query you have just run if you want to download it whether it's in tsv format or csv format you can just download it okay and you can just give the file name as well okay and try to click on export so these are the different so you can see like uh, even for example if you want to copy it okay so you can just copy into this clipboard okay whatever the copy results and you can just make use of those information here also and here okay so whatever the uh, sample data i've just selected okay here also you can just preview the data okay and you can see all the columns all the basic details over here okay so this is also very much important okay so in this section okay you should know about the find data objects you can just access all the data objects okay all the tables views and everything and creating the new worksheets as soon as you open of course you'll be in the, some worksheet okay you can just keep on adding the worksheets and if you're running some query okay so we know how to access the query id and what is the sql uh are being used here okay so and if you want to download it we have seen that okay and what are the columns available here okay so and along with this the more important part is this entire three section so we have account admin so whatever the role we have selected and in which warehouse because we know how to create a warehouse and i can just um select the warehouse here and uh, which database i'm just working okay so and what is the schema of it okay so this three sections is very much important whenever you are working with the uh, snowflake okay so uh, for example so this is the current database right so if i want to so want to see uh, so if i want to okay so i can just select the current schema okay um, okay uh, so you can, I can just, for example, if I want to use the different role, okay, I can just give here, uh, change the role to account, okay, right to an account, right, mm. user, okay, so whatever the, uh, we have roles, okay, I can just switch it, okay, by using this use role, okay, so these are the different options we have available uh, over here, okay. So uh, next important section is, I hope you understood everything, right? So this is very much important. And uh, uh, for the history tab, okay, so we can just open the history from directly from this uh, result section, okay? And or else you can just click on to this history, okay? If I click on to the history, uh, uh, so right now I'm just this selected query for that reason I'm getting this. Uh, I'll just close this and get back to the home section. 
let's close this worksheet or else you can just rename here okay if I just click you can just rename here also okay so uh, let's refresh yeah so if you get into the history section okay so here uh, you can uh, view each and every uh, query id which is being run in this snowflake okay so you can see the status of the query okay so see you can see uh, it's uh, you can see like how the interface is built okay not even one single query is missed here okay so you can see the status of the query okay then you can see the query id then you can see the sql text okay so whatever the text you have been entered you can see the username okay so which warehouse and what is the cluster then size then session id when what was started and the total duration bytes uh, then scan client information rows okay if i'm just selecting one of the query here okay so you can just uh, access this is so same thing you can just access from the result tab also right so if i get back to the history so you can see all the history here right so here also you just have the customization okay so whatever the user for example if i want to uh, see based on user status or duration i can just select this and um, this is what different uh, users we have all right so here if you want to include the client generated statements okay you can just select this these are all the client generated statements if you want to include the queries executed by the user task okay you can see all these details if you want to see both okay you can just uh, select check this uh, two uh, boxes here okay so this is all about the history tab. So if I can just uh, hide the filters, show the filters, okay, you can just add the, uh, uh, the different filters if you want it, okay. So this is uh, comes under the history tab. So next uh, worksheets we have already seen, right? So next is account, okay. So account provides all the details related to your account, okay. So um, there is what the account ID, uh, how many warehouses we have, what is the credit used, and what is the uh, average storage use right now? It's 3.472 GB and what is the uh, data transfer? It's zero bytes, right? And you can just download this, all this information. Okay, you can view in the pie chart format also. Okay, there is warehouses names and credit used. Uh, and uh, you can see the billing information. Okay, uh, so uh, right now, if you want to add the credit card, right now I'm just free trail. Okay, you can just see, you can just add it. Next is users, all the users you can just access from the account section. You can see like it comes under one day only under the account admin. If I just switch back to this user admin, you're not able to see it, right? So account information, you're not able to see it. So I'll need to switch back to the account admin. Okay, uh, so uh, users, okay. Then the roles, what are the roles available we have, okay. So next, the policies, I can create a new policies here, okay. So some of the uh, IP addresses, I can just block the IP addresses or allow some of the active addresses or if I want to already have existing, then I can edit it, activate or delete it. Then manage the sections, okay. So all the session details. Then resource monitor is also very much important. What are the consumptions, okay. So credit consumptions, you can just access from here. Uh, if you want to render the accounts, okay. So there are some... Uh, um, uh, third party members if you want to access some of the data from the uh, from my uh, uh, snowflake right so i can just give the access to them you can see so a reader account enable providers to share data with the customers who are not already a snowflake customers without requiring the customers to become a snowflake customer okay you can just give the you can just grant, uh, grant them a reader access can see so account name commands and you can see the username and password and all the basic details so it all comes under the account section okay so uh, this is usage billing and everything so i hope you have understood uh, uh, the uh, complete uh, web interface right so where we have uh, seen about the started with the user preferences we have seen how to change the password switch roles multi-factor authentication how to manage the notification then we see about the account details that is about the organization edition cloud provider and the regions okay so even we have seen about the different tabs like database what is the share what is the data marketplace a virtual warehouse then query worksheet uh, how to access the history and account preview app okay then partner connect uh, help notification right and even we have seen how to create objects and sql scripts okay uh, then uh, even how to load the data to the web ui and also download and copy to the clipboard right so from the whatever the query you are running and the query history filter criteria and all the account section so i hope you have understood okay so let's move on to the uh, uh, to the uh, next video hello everyone okay welcome back so in this video let's explore about the snow site right so in the previous video we have seen the uh, classic uh, web ui right so this is a new web interface okay so once you have logged just logged in you can see the snow site over here okay i'll just click on to this this is a uh, you can see like when i 
hover onto this you can see here so starting using the new interface okay we have added new features which is not available in the classic version including full account search sql autocomplete chart visualization uh, usage dashboards and more okay so are some of the new features which they've added and you can see like some of the drawbacks as i told you in the classic right so whenever i'm just that keep on adding the new worksheets by default name will be worksheets and when i want to switch between the worksheets it will be very difficult okay unless if i am not renamed right so and um, there are certain drawbacks okay so uh when it comes to a visualization of some data and all those things okay so you can see this is some of the uh updates like uh, it has a sql autocomplete feature okay and even uh, uh including uh account search okay so and uh, about the chart visualization okay so all these parameters can be done with the help of snow site okay i'll just click on the snow site okay so this is the page uh where i need to uh, just log in <coughs> okay so as soon as you click on to this okay so this is what the new interface is okay so slightly different right so this is what uh, you can see like for the classic right so we have account uh, we have databases shades and data, uh, data market uh, warehouse worksheets but when it comes to the uh, new uh, web ui okay so here you have a uh, uh, account right so uh, in the, the account details okay you have the switch role okay same like the like classic right so here you need to switch the roles like uh, account admin or uh, if you want to go to the uh, public uh, security admin or user admin right and here we have a profile okay so in the profile you can access all your information like uh, username first name last name and and in the, the profile itself you can just get into this multi-factor authentication right so um if you want to have the multi-factor authentication you can just get into profile and click on this end role okay so this is what the profile is so here uh, we have a partner connect option under the account this time right so you can see like here we have a partner connect so if i click on this okay so this is what the partner connects we have okay uh so with uh, depending on the uh, categories okay so if you want with data science ml this is some of the uh, partner connects okay for the data integration we have fair train okay so quay lake okay there are many different options right uh so this is our documentation and support and final logout okay so only the partner can they have added here under the uh, account uh, section so next uh when i get back to the uh home okay so here uh yeah so next we have uh the different tabs for first is worksheets okay next we have a dashboards okay so you can see like it's changing according to for example in the worksheets i can click on to this new worksheet here okay so uh so new worksheet is being created right so this is uh so here uh we have uh we can create a folders this time okay so i can click new folder like uh, uh demo uh new demo okay so create folder so inside the folder i can create a worksheet right so i can share okay so right now i'm in account admin you can see here right so even i can just switch it right so this all things you can just do it okay uh, and here inside the folder i can create a worksheet from sql file or uh, delete a folder okay so all this operation you can just perform so now so once i refresh you can see inside the worksheets tab i have this uh, folder right so uh, inside the folder i can have the multiple files and this is the files uh this is the worksheet which is shared with me and this is all my worksheets this is all the folders okay you can access access from here okay under the worksheets tab uh so next uh, this is a new folder uh so if you have any existing worksheets okay you can just directly import it okay so this is the manage filters okay so you can see um uh, how we can just manage all these filters uh next we have a create a worksheet from the sql file okay so there are different options which is available under the worksheets so when i click on the dashboard okay so uh this is uh the dashboard okay so where i can for example i click on to this sample okay so uh you can create dashboards okay so uh, for example whenever you are querying some data and if you want to uh save the some of the charts okay you can just save all those charts under the uh, dashboards okay uh so inside the dashboard okay so you can have all the uh uh files okay so you can see so uh here like uh when was it updated what was the role for this particular file and all the information and even you can create a new dashboard by clicking onto this we just give the dashboard name okay uh new dashboard okay so here i can just give a new tile okay so i can query the data okay so for example i'll just go to the sample data
okay so you can just add some query and you can just try to have you can just try to visualization okay uh, okay so i'm just doing a select star okay so here we have a charts okay so first main thing so under the objects okay so if we so for example i'm running some query okay so so this is how the even the in the queries section works okay i'm just showing in the dashboard itself okay so we have uh, objects right so if i want to hide it i can just hide the all the objects okay so whatever you are, uh, i have right so next is query okay so if i click on this query so i'm uh, i'm able to dis, uh, close this query tab right so this is the result okay so all the results can be viewed from here and this is the chart right so all the charts you can just access from here right so you can see like depending upon like if you want line chart bar chart scatter plot heat or um, other type of charts you can just access here right so uh, here you can just download it okay so here you can just hide the chart okay so the sections okay so <clears throat> okay so let's go to the new dash so you can see so inside the new dash i have just saved okay if i just get back to this uh, home page and inside the dashboard i have a new dash and inside the new dash you automatically save this particular file right okay so this is how you can just create a dashboards and this is the uh, shade dashboards okay so and this is all the dashboard you can just access from here so next is data okay so all the data uh, like if you want to create the database you can see like interface is slightly different okay so uh, so you can see like all the databases which we created in the uh, in the previous videos okay so in uh, like in, in upcoming videos we'll create databases okay so uh, so you'll see like uh, how we can create a database and how to create the tables okay so all the tables which i just created uh, you can see inside the new uh, uh, web ui also okay so you can access all the website uh, so all the databases for example if i get into this fire database okay inside the fire database uh you have uh, all the details like uh schema okay so who is the ownership okay so if you want to create a schema okay so then uh, all the privileges okay so you can see all the schemas over here okay so if you want to add new schema you can just do it if i click on to this particular table okay you can see the same all in same information over here okay so uh, this is how it's done okay so this is all about the databases this is the shade data okay so um so if you want to have the shade data just click on to the shade data select the data and which data you want to share it okay so this is what the shade data you can create it okay same like old here we have a shades right so same like that okay next is marketplace so it's under the data section so can get, can get all this third party data okay so uh, it could be any domain whether finance or uh, any other data okay under the compute okay so we have the uh, all the history uh, information okay so there's all the warehouse okay here also we have an option to create a warehouse okay so you can see like right now it's very we have few options to fill in okay what is the name and what is the size and rest us uh, in the advanced section we can just uh, give uh, um, uh, some of the uh, configurations but when we in the whole interface okay so here also we can create it but it was uh, you can see like we have to uh, enter a few of the options here right okay so this comes uh, this is all about the warehouses okay so next is resource monitors okay we can just uh, uh, monitor all the resources if you can just add uh, uh, even if you want to click and add then i can give the name okay so uh, then monitor oh, i need to monitor account or warehouse and all the actions okay so i can just specify this is what the resource monitor and inside the uh, account again we have the usage and what are the roles we have inside it uh, what are the users uh, security okay so billing okay so this all comes under the account okay and uh, if i just get back to worksheet and here the same thing right so if i want to query the data this is where we uh, so if i just go to the sample data and you'll run it here okay and you have a shortcut okay so uh, control enter so here same thing so i can hide the objects within the worksheets okay so i can hide the query i can hide the results i can 
uh, view the charts okay so this is what uh, you can access and all the query details will be here if i click on this query details okay you can uh, view in the query profile okay so you can see this is a query profile and uh, in the query profile you have a query details with uh, the success uh, the duration and the rows okay and uh, about the statistics okay you can just view in the query uh, profile okay um yeah so all the details you can just access so you can see like now the interface is slightly different and it's very handy right so uh, i hope you understood okay so you can just work with the old interface itself okay if you are comfortable okay so if you're comfortable you can just work it here okay so um uh, if you are unless you are master in snowflake you can just get back to the new interface and uh, uh manage all those things okay so here the same like uh, right now you can just change the roles and the warehouses from here okay similar like this right so if i get into some of the worksheets okay so here i can just access right i can just switch uh, to which role i want to go or which compute or which databases right so here also same thing okay and uh, to create the databases also the same option okay so uh so if i get into these uh, data so if i want to create new databases uh demo three four five okay uh so uh, once i create the databases to get into this i can add schema inside this uh new uh, schema created so once i add the new schema okay so this is what the new schema so inside the schema i can create a table view stage pipe stream task function and procedure right so if i click on to the standard this is what the table i can create it right so it's similar like so whatever i've explained in detail so you can just perform all the operations inside the databases whether to create or the table or any other uh, um any other option like staging if you want to do staging pipe or stream task or functions and procedure so this is what the new interface okay i hope you understood now let's try to uh, write some of the queries okay how can just write the queries in the snowflake in the next video hello everyone so welcome back so in this video let's discuss some of the uh, snowflake unique features okay so we know snowflake uh, uh, is a cloud a native analytics analytical data warehouse solution and comes with a lot of unique and important features uh, which makes these tools very powerful and also differentiate from the other cloud native data warehouse solution which is offered by the various cloud providers right uh, even it, it is a faster and easy to use compared to other data warehouse solutions okay so in this video let's discuss some of the major uh, uh, features okay so first feature is of course like a major cloud platform support right so snowflake uh, can be hosted in uh, any of the uh, three major cloud platforms we have seen whether it could be azure uh, AWS or GCP and majority of the uh, Snowflake core functionalities and features are available across all the cloud providers okay and uh, data loading and the data ingestion is also supported across all these three cloud platforms okay you can also store your data in GCP and load them into AWS Snowflake instance you can see like basically batch as well as streaming okay you can just perform all these operations and majority of the cloud regions are also supported okay so you can just host your Snowflake instance to one of these regions okay so where your data is located right and when we talk about pricing right so um, uh, the pricing is so simple that it does not depend on the uh, cloud provider okay it, it all depends on the slow flick edition uh, which you uh, are planning for your data platform so um, uh, when we talk about the security so all the compliance and security features are available across all the cloud providers and that makes business owners life very easy right so this is what it supports the major uh, cloud platform support uh, sorry um, support platforms so next uh, next feature is like unlimited storage and compute okay so uh, since uh, snowflake is born in the cloud and natively built using the cloud technologies okay it takes the advantage of infinite scalability elasticity and redundancy features and uh, you can just store more and scale up and down your uh, computer as needed right scaling and storing is one of the major factor when we talk about the cloud right so it supports all those things and next is the uh, the provision for the storage and compute is so simple and driven by this sql statements uh, it brings a different level of uh, simplicity right so um, uh, and even you can and uh, and you uh, only pay for what you store and run the compute right so when your compute is not used it is not charged even a single uh, rupee here right and the storage is encrypted and compressed so overall storage cost is very very uh, competitive okay 
and uh, the storage cost is based on the daily compressed average okay so you should remember that and the compute cost is per uh, second basis okay so this is what one of the feature is the next feature is like data platform as a service so uh, i i explained you like snowflake is a software as service offering okay so where we don't require any uh, uh hardware okay to select install and configure and manage okay so even uh, there is a, uh, there is virtually no software to install or configure or manage and even all this maintenance management um, upgrades and everything is handled by the snowflake right even we have seen that and any business or data team can technically start their uh, data platform at no time right within a few clicks i can just uh, configure the database or warehouses and different uh, solutions uh, like storage compute uh, cloud services and data transfer monitors alerts and everything is managed by the snowflake itself for that reason it's considered as a software as a service so when we talk next feature is of course a unique um, uh, architecture that we have a three layer architecture that is a storage compute and other uh, that is cloud services okay with the, which they are decoupled so they can scale up and scale down independently right because we have three different layers okay so we can just um manage those things and even you can just run your business with uh, 10 users or even with the 10k users also right so which, which does not impact your analytical workload and the cloud services take care of all the scalability uh, of number of sessions users and the optimizations so well that you uh, you don't have to worry about anything unlike other data warehouse uh, platforms okay and um, storage and the compute can scale up and scale down independently as i told you they have different layers right so and there's in uh, so there is a no uh, uh, continuation like etl job has to run only on this window or something like that okay so even you can just attach and scale up and scale down your compute on uh, a fly and serve uh, uh, fly and serve better or faster to meet your business requirements okay and this help you to keep your data pipeline design simple and focus on the business logic okay so this is what the one of the feature is so next is a uh, virtual warehouse okay so we have seen the virtual warehouses in the different sizes right so virtual warehouse is one of the key feature here okay so which is basically on demand compute which can be attached or detached with very simple sql statements and compute can be scaled up or down with uh, alter uh, statement just like any other uh, database objects right so even we have seen the differences when we explored about the web ui and um, so next is of course the uh, support for the structured and the semi-structured data so you can just load the csv uh, orc jsv uh, so json or xml files okay even you can just query them using the simple uh, sql statements and snowflake has a rich and extended sql command to support in okay and even slow, uh, snowflake has this uh, optimized uh, semi-structured uh, data access so it is very uh, fast okay and serve your business needs without any uh, latency uh, so next feature is about the time travel feature is one of the best uh, um, um, uh, feature okay so as part of continuation okay data production life cycle snowflake allows you to access the historical da uh, data okay so at any point uh, in any specific period okay it serves the powerful purpose uh, of some of the use case would be like restoring the data related object that might have the accidental deleted or duplicating or backing up the data from the key uh, key point in the past okay uh, and analyzing the data usage okay manipulation over the specific period of time okay so some of the uh, so time travel feature is one of the uh, best feature in the snowflake okay so um, next we have a clone or zero uh, copy clone okay so basically it creates a copy of database and uh, schema or table without uh, actually copying the data okay it is a snapshot of the data to the source objects okay and cloning database will clone all the schemas and tables within the databases okay so these are some of the major uh, uh, features you can just remember whenever we are talking about the uh, snowflake okay so i've just listed some of the features okay uh, so um, so uh, all these features includes uh, uh, like uh, may uh, like i suppose the major cloud platforms okay so unlimited storage and compute then data platform as a service uh, then we discuss about the features like which, uh, virtual warehouse right so even it supports the structure and semi-structured data then uh, it supports the time travel unique features right even we can just clone our uh, zero copy the uh, uh, so zero copy clone okay so even we can do a continuous data loading okay uh, it even supports the uh, third party right so like uh, uh, we will do a small demo on the fire train okay i'll just show you there okay we have a data encryption and security data replication failure right so uh, and data more over the data marketplace okay so uh, the snowflake data marketplace even it utilizes the snowflake secure data sharing to connect providers of data with customers right so these are some of the best uh, uh, unique features of uh, snowflake hello everyone so welcome back uh, so in this video let's see how we can create a database and schema under the snowflake okay so first uh, step is we need to uh, set the context 
and weight house okay so first we need to use the uh, so first i need to specify which role i'm using okay so use role uh, i'll use system admin okay so first let's run this Okay, and see, the statement has uh, executed successfully. So my role has been changed to system admin. Okay, so next step is to create a database. So next step is to create a database. Okay, to create a database, the query is very simple. That is create a database my DB. Okay, so even you can just add a comment to it. Okay, so stating that comment is equal to this is my demo db okay okay so let's try to run this okay so you can see uh so database my db so here also you can see the difference here so database my db was successfully created okay you can see this is what my db is right now right so next is uh, uh, to show all the database and schema. So I can write. <coughs> so I can write show all the uh, database and schema. So I can just write uh, show databases okay so i can just give analyze like uh my okay let's try this okay i'll just give the caps my percentage okay so let's try to run this okay you can see so i'm able to find my database okay so uh so here uh the owner is system admin right so yeah so next is as soon as you create a database the uh, the context is changed and the current db is set okay so for example if you want to see the uh, uh like uh, which uh, role you are using or which database you are using so every time you need to select this okay so every time like uh, you can just check with like this okay that is select uh, current role okay comma current database okay so let's try to run this query okay so you can see so i'm getting uh an result like current role is system admin and my db okay if you want to switch to any other okay you can just uh, again uh you make use of this query that is use okay so if you want to go to the account admin just type use role account admin and you can just verify by uh, uh, uh um, adding this okay so this is how we can just check so next is uh is to create the schema okay so next is to create a schema okay to create a schema so we'll write create create schema uh, so i'll give my schema okay and even i can just write the comment this is my demo schema under my db okay so let's try to run this okay so you can see so schema my schema successfully got created and here you can just see all the tabs is slightly changing right so right now i'm in the system uh, admin uh, right and my database is my db and my uh, schema is my schema and right now i'm in the uh, compute warehouse okay okay so next is uh, to show uh, to check all these schemas okay i can just write uh, show to show schemas okay so you can see so i can see all the schemas okay so right now my db this is what the schema we are using right so just now i created okay so next is like um so even you can just uh, even make use of show schema is one more option and one more is like uh, uh you can even write uh, current 
current schema okay so you can see um, okay you can see so i'm right now i'm under the my schema okay so this is how basically we can create a database and schema under the uh, snowflake account okay fine so in this video let's see how we can create a table with different data types okay so uh, so let's create a table okay so let's create a table uh, called my table okay and then you can just and table creation okay so first we'll create a table called my table okay so and even uh, the table creation does not need any virtual warehouse or computer okay so we can use the uh, warehouse computer okay so you can see right now it's in the compute uh, warehouse itself so if you right if you're not if you're in the different warehouse you can just select this use warehouse compute okay so now let's uh, create okay so uh, drop if if exits my table okay then create create table called my table okay of number number of the range i am just providing 10 to 1 i'll just write everything next is decimal so data type i'll give decimal numeric of 30 to 3 range so int i'll give int integer of integer So T table table cell okay T A B So here integer comma so I made some mistake so drop a table T A B L E sorry Yeah, so you can see my table is successfully executed. So if I just go to the database uh, under the my schema, so we have this table called my table. Okay, so this is how we create a table. So even uh, if I want to describe the uh, table, so I can just uh, write, uh, so describe uh, table, my table. So this is how we can just do it.
T A B L E okay so you can see so this is what uh, we have created right so numeric uh, so starting with num right so you can see this is the num so we have a column called uh, row next uh, we have uh, uh, num uh, 10 okay decimal then we have numeric integer okay so next week this is how we can create a table okay this same like how we do it in the uh, sql right so same thing okay so next is uh, let's uh, for example if you want to select okay so i can just select like select uh, get so i can provide the table Table. let's run this yeah okay so you can see all the details like this right so create or replace table name you can see whatever we have just written here right so next is uh, we know how to insert it so same command that is insert into Uh, insert into my table okay so that is first we have num then we have num underscore num 10 underscore 1 and decimal underscore 20 underscore two then numeric then we have int integer okay so next is values so first i like 10 uh, then 22.3 so I just wanted to show that we can add a different data table, okay? So 33.33, 33, uh, then 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, then we can add some big number, numeric. Comma and 1, 2, 1, 1, 2. Okay. So let's insert this. okay so you can see number of rows inserted is one okay so even you can just uh, view the detail uh, data right so uh, you can just add the uh, um, uh, more uh, like if you're doing a hands-on okay you can just add more uh, data into the table okay so i'll just show you the uh, how we can just view the select star uh, from my table so let's run this query okay you can see all the data here right so this is how we can uh, <clears throat> so even see even with respect to the uh, you can just give the entire path entire path in the sense so i can just give select start from so i'll give my db is so my database is my db dot uh, i need to give my schema that's what the schema then i give the schema name then dot and my table this is the entire path i can give okay so let's run this my sorry it's capital db so type error sorry db so my is also capital okay So everything is caps. 
so my <coughs> underscore schema and similarly my underscore table okay fine so if i just try to run it okay you can see i'm getting the output so this is uh, uh to get the data that is select start from my table you can just get it or it can be the entire path for example if you're working with some other database if you want to see the uh, contents of the table you can just give the entire path first is database then schema and finally the uh, uh table name okay this is a fully qualified name okay so we'll say this is a fully qualified name okay so i hope you understood so we have seen how to create the uh, how to uh, change the roles and how to create the databases schemas and the table and how to insert the values inside the table okay in this video let's see how we can create a table with the text field okay so already i have just typed here okay so so first so drop table if exist right so i'm creating a my table my text table okay so same queries okay to create table my text table so here uh, int with auto increment uh, variable character then wave 50 variable character 50 then character 50 so i'm just creating the table okay so let's create this okay so next is to describe the table so same query so we'll describe it okay so this is what the uh, columns we have then let's insert the values okay so if i'm just inserting so this is you can see like one row got affected so let's load the data so if i'm just uh, select star from uh, my table okay so this is how we can do it or else we can just create or replace the table okay so so with the boolean data set okay so even we can just do the describe okay and then we can just run it okay so i'll just show you so whatever we have just created if i just go to the database section so you can see this my db has been created inside the my db so we have this uh, boolean table which we just created we have a my, my text table and my table right so if i go to the my text table so you can see this is what the data so even from here i can just load the table which i've already showed you by discussing the web ui right i can click on the load data load table and see this is the columns okay you can just modify you can just create a new uh, column uh, itself and you can just do it okay so select the warehouse because right now we are in the compute so click on next and source file so select the file from your system because right now i just created this demo okay or else you can just create the uh, some sample data and click on next next and uh, after creating okay so you can just load it so once you load it you can even so this is how we load it okay so from the text table okay from the text field okay so i'll just get back yeah so uh, so the next uh, rest uh, operations you can just perform as it is like whatever we have done in the previous videos Okay, so here we will see how we can create a table with the date and time stamp field. Okay, so here, uh, so same commands like drop table if exist. So I'm just creating a new table called my TS table. So we can create or replace my TS table. So this is what the column says today's date. Okay, so of the and we are making this is default and um, a current date, current time, and the current time stamp. Okay, so let's uh, execute this. okay so query got executed so you can uh, view all the details here also okay so you can see like my uh, uh, ts table has been created okay so next is let's describe the table okay so let's describe it and one main thing you need to remember is so whatever i'm just creating okay even in small letters changing into the capital here okay so and describe the table okay so this is what we are doing so let's insert the one record so to check the current timestamp and the uh, current time date okay so let's see if it is working okay so you can see one row got affected okay so let's select star from my table so you can see so current uh, today's today's date and you can see the time right now right so even you can just change the session level and time zone and see the result like for example if you want to alter the you can see like here we have just um, uh, set to the session okay uh, so if I want to change to the Los Angeles and time zone to Japan and uh, timestamp to the output format of this type, okay, so I can just uh, run this, okay, so if I try to insert it 
and view the result okay you can see the time right now right so this is how uh, we can uh, 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 create a table with date and timestamp field okay so in this video let's see how we can create a table with upper lower and mixed case okay so we'll understand cleanly okay so first let's see uh, so let's drop a table my case table if you already exist okay so i think uh, can select does not exist so create a table okay so my uh, uh, case uh, table okay so it got executed so we if we describe the table so uh, so you can see these are some of the parameters we have right so even uh, we, uh, I have just showed you, right? So if you can pass the alias, okay. So similar, like you can just take the tables which follows like my, uh, uh, what? My, uh, and uh, starting with the case, you can see it's able to identify it, okay? So here I'm just giving my underscores uh, like small letter C, but I mean, if I just try to pass it, I'm able to identify that particular table also, right? So now let's create a table, okay? So if I just give in the capital letter, okay? So my case table, so my case table already exists, okay? So so if I just try to, you can see the my case table, okay? So if I give in the small letter, okay? So you can see like right now, uh, the my is in small, right? So if I just try to execute it, so my, so you can see, so it's able to identify it, right? So whether you're giving in small letter, whether you're giving capital letter, so it's able to, uh, uh, it is not replicating, right? You can see my underscore uh, and this my underscore uh, is same and uh, you can see it's all showing already exist. Okay, if I just try to click on the show tables, okay, so it's all the, all the tables right now we have, right? So next is object identifier, okay? So, uh, so create a table, my table, okay? Uh, so now give a uh, capital t okay so let's try to execute so you can see here so this my and this t okay so right now basically it is detecting that these two are different okay so from here this t and this t okay as in small letter but here this t and this t in capital letter okay so here it's identifying it as a different tables okay so you can see like uh, my table and my table are totally different okay so if i just try to create a table completely with the all the caps it's also got created okay so only the uh, first so whatever you can see the difference here right so only the first okay so it will uh, make it as capital and it will not create a duplicate but if you are giving a table name okay where it has the uh, where you're following the uh, capital for the each and every uh, uh, word okay so then it will create a new table for you okay so so if i just click on the show tables okay you can see the all the tables here okay and you only describe fine so this is how we create a table with upper lower and the mixed cases. Okay, so now let's see how we, uh, so constraints in slope like, okay, so let's get started. So first, uh, so first we are just uh, uh, dropping the table if exist. So my constraints table and or else we're creating a table called my constraints table. And here you can see the constraints is we are adding like primary key and we're making this uh, column as not null and last name as not null than the even this is we are making a uh, default as active okay and the unique string code is unique okay so let's create the table okay so if i try to execute it okay you can see like uh, table constraints has been uh, created okay so you can see constraints has been created next we are inserting a value okay so uh, insert the values okay it's got executed so if i just check the select star from okay so this is what the data we're getting okay so you can see like some of the uh, errors here okay so if I try to execute this, okay, so I'm getting like a, a null result is non-nullable column, right? So we are just passing a null, for, for example, for that reason, we are getting a non-null error, okay? So here also, let's try to run it, okay? So you can see non-nullable column. So this is, I just wanted to show you, okay? So even the it's same like, okay, see the query processing rest, everything is similar, okay? So now uh, I think you all are familiar with how to uh, create a database, how to create a, a warehouse, how to create um, a data, uh, what? Um, use the role and how to create a schema and how to load the data, right? So, uh, so if you have, uh, have any doubts, okay, you can just ask me in the discussion forum.